introduce to you Jeffrey Horrell, Dean of Libraries and Librarian of the College, and Michael Casey, inaugural James Wright Professor and Chair of the Department of Music at Dartmouth College. Jeffrey Horrell became the 18th Librarian of the College in 2005 after serving as librarian at Dartmouth's German Art Library from 1981 through 1986, he worked at Syracuse University in several library positions before joining Harvard in 1992. At Harvard, he was first the librarian of Fine Arts Library from 92 to 98, and then served as acting librarian at Harvard's Houghton Library, where books and manuscripts are held. In 1998, he assumed the position of associate librarian of Harvard College for collections. As librarian at Dartmouth, he oversees the entire Dartmouth College library system, which includes nine individual libraries. Michael Casey, again, is the inaugural James Wright Professor and Chair of the Department of Music. He directs the Bregman Music and Audio Research Studio, which is a lab investigating the links between music, information, cognition, and neuroscience. He has worked on several grant-funded projects, including Action, Audiovisual Cinematic Toolbox for Interaction, Organization, and Navigation, and which was funded by NEH, and Search by Groove, um, which received a Google Faculty Research Award. Thank you uh, to Dartmouth, and to begin by uh, offering congratulations on behalf of my Dartmouth colleagues uh, to the chapter, the New England chapter of the Music Library Association, on your 50th anniversary, which you're celebrating this year. And I understand uh, the chapter is planning a very special meeting at the Boston Athenaeum in early October to mark this uh, milestone. Uh, you've all accomplished a lot in the last uh, half century. And uh, we're very pleased to have all of you here uh, as part of this special anniversary year. Uh, if some of you were listening to uh, public radio this morning, uh, you may have heard that this day, today, is the uh, 50th anniversary of the Rolling Stones signing their first record contract. <laughs> so you are in very good company. <laughs> um, this past year, Dartmouth's uh, Hopkins Center for the uh, Performing Arts uh, reached the same milestone, 50 years, and the Paddock Music Library opened in 1975. We're very proud of the programs and services of the Paddock Library, in spite of space and location challenges. But planning is underway for a renovation of the Hopkins Center, and we're excited about initial ideas for new space, hopefully uh, more centrally located, which can provide uh, collaborative workspaces for students and faculty, and potentially include some of our dance and theater uh, collections uh, as well as being a community gathering uh, space on that part of the campus. And I want to describe a little bit about the, the Dartmouth libraries uh, very briefly. Uh, as mentioned, there are nine uh, libraries and we have a staff of 170. And uh, you will be having a presentation uh, shortly by our fine colleague, Anthony Helm, who is head of our uh, Jones Media Center. And uh, a former colleague, um, uh, Reed Lowry, who was at Dartmouth and is now at uh, Harvard, has come back and he'll be on the program today as well. We're glad that both of you are participating. We have central, uh, centralized and shared services in the Dartmouth Library for acquisitions, cataloging, metadata services, preservation. And unlike some institutions, um, the professional schools, engineering, business, and medicine, report up through my position. This enables uh, the Dartmouth Library to work as one organization supporting our students and faculty in their discovery and research and teaching. Dartmouth is a research institution with a strong emphasis on teaching and cross-disciplinary work and has been ranked very highly, actually first, uh, for undergraduate teaching over the past several years by the U.S. News and World Report rankings. I hope while you're here today and hopefully tomorrow, uh, to take the opportunity of seeing some of our other libraries. Uh, the Baker Library uh, complex combines traditional and contemporary spaces alongside computing services, the Dartmouth Center for the Advancement of Learning, the Writing Program for Dartmouth, undergraduate student services, and a King Arthur Flower Cafe, uh, which is quite good. Uh, next door to uh, the Baker Berry complex 
uh, is Rauner Library uh, Special Collections, uh, which was renovated by uh, the Robert Venturi uh, firm about a dozen years ago in Webster Hall, which was a former auditorium theater, and there are a lot of uh, theatrical details in that space uh, that I think you might find rather interesting. Also this weekend is uh, the Dartmouth powwow. This is the 41st uh, powwow since uh, renewing Dartmouth's commitment to its founding mission in 1769 of educating the youth of Indian tribes. Uh, the first 200 years of that commitment uh, were not particularly stellar with only 19 uh, Native Americans um, graduating from Dartmouth. But since uh, 1970, uh, nearly 700 individuals from 200 different tribes have attended Dartmouth. And the music and the dance as uh, part of the powwow is extraordinary. Uh, so if you do have an opportunity, uh, it's well worth uh, attending. Finally, I want to um, acknowledge Pat Fiskin, um, who is the librarian of the Pat of the uh, Paddock Music Library, not only for her efforts uh, in planning and preparing for this meeting, but for her collaborative endeavors professionally. She has been instrumental in developing uh, uh, cooperative collection agreements across uh, the Borrow Direct Partnership, all of the Ivies plus MIT, and has helped develop her own special collections here at Dartmouth, in addition to all her other uh, responsibilities as being head of the uh, Paddock Library. She's a highly valued colleague and someone which we greatly respect and appreciate. Thank you, Pat. I know you have an excellent program planned and I wish you a very productive and enjoyable time here at Dartmouth. We are really pleased that you are all here. Thank you. From the Department of Music, welcome to all of you on this bright sunny morning. Picked a good day. So I just want to tell you a little bit about the Department of Music and, uh, and then talk a bit more about the Arts of Dartmouth, so it won't be long. Um, first of all, the Department of Music, um, in, in, this, in the size of this college, we have something like 4,000 plus undergraduates. We see about 1,000 undergraduates a year enrolled in our courses and taking part in eight ensembles um, the Hopkins Center for the Arts, I believe you may have seen this last night if you arrived. It's on the south side of campus, the other side of the green. It's the building where the facade looks a bit like the Lincoln Center in New York, and there's a good reason for that. It's the same architect. And this is the building that's 50 years old uh, this year that um, Jeff was telling us about. Uh, so the music department's housed in that building, as is the Paddock Music Library, so some of you have probably found your way there. There are um, basically if you count it up, there's something like 35 music faculty, and then there's eight ensemble directors that conduct orchestras and things like that. Um, the nine of those faculty are tenure track, and they span composition. We have a strong program in composition. Performance is at the core of everything we do. Everyone needs to play an instrument. If you want to be a music major, you have to play an instrument or sing or convince someone that you know something about playing music in some way. We have a strong history and criticism program and uh, ethnomusicology. I want to focus attention a little bit on something that I'm responsible for. Let me put up the music department website. Okay, so you can go to the website, and what you'll find actually. Um, is, is there's this nice rolling carousel that tells you what's coming up, or in, the, in that case, what's already happened for some reason. Um, <laughs> we've got um, about 20 music majors, and all of them are doing senior recitals, and there's, I think, three or four of them happening tomorrow. So if you find yourself around t tomorrow and you want to hear uh, a full, full recital level by one of the seniors, um, you can look here and see the schedule. Uh, music.dartmouth.edu, not too hard to find. Um, and then we have a digital music studio and a graduate program associated with that that I'm uh, responsible for. So there. I'm sure it'll appear eventually. So uh, there's been a digital 
music studio, uh, sorry, an electronic music studio at Dartmouth since 1967, probably, you know, among the first in the country. Um, there's a strong tradition of music and technology here. In fact, technology at Dartmouth has a strong tradition. The term artificial intelligence was coined here in the late 1940s by Marvin Minsky and uh, John McCarthy. Marvin's actually coming here again in a couple of weeks uh, to give a talk. Um, remote computing uh, was first done at Dartmouth in the 1940s. Time sharing computing was first done at Dartmouth. The programming language BASIC, which I started with, anyone else here started BASIC? Yeah, right, great. Right, yeah. That was a Dartmouth College undergraduate student project uh, in the 1960s under the leadership of John Kimmony. And so uh, there's a strong tradition of uh, computing, and then the connection between music and computing is very strong too, and the graduate program embodies that to a certain extent. Um, in the 1970s, the New England Digital Corporation uh, grew out of a collaboration between the music department and the Thayer School of Engineering. And they invented this thing called the Dartmouth Digital Synthesizer. It was the first all digital music synthesizer that was commercialized. And that became the Synclavier digital musical instrument that went on to be commercially successful for about a decade until um, Apple um, sunk it, basically. So. <laughs> uh, you could either buy a Synclavier for a quarter of a million dollars or an Apple Mac for a couple of thousand dollars that would do roughly the same thing. <laughs> Not a good business model. Right. Um, so what, what we're doing these days is that tradition continues. We have um, six graduate students, we have PhD students from computer science, all collaborating, composers, technologists. We do a lot of work with computer science, with neuroscience. We have a project called Neurosonic Decoding, where we're actually making the sound that you hear in your brain using fMRI scanning and computational modeling of the relationship between neural patterns and, and the sounds that you hear. So that's our most cutting edge project. And me, myself, I've been involved in your world a little bit, the library's world. Um, I've been on the International Standards Organization behind the metadata standards that drive a lot of digital technology, MPEG-4, and then MPEG-7 being the metadata standards. We've been involved with the Variations 2 Digital Music Library project from in Indiana. We had an install here, uh, had some programmers from um, Central Academic Computing help us install that. And um, I've been involved with the International uh, Society for Music Information Retrieval, which really grew out of a music libraries, a digital music library initiative. So uh, it's been fascinating to kind of see the momentum and the innovation that's come out of this world. So thank you very much and welcome and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you.